Today we're going to be starting our teddy bear project for summer and I've painted him on just a, I think it's an eight and a half by eleven, eight and a half by eleven birch plywood panel. So you can paint him on any any surface of your choice. I just use this one as something that's quick and easy and easy for me to to demo here on the video. So here's our finished one, and we're first thing we're going to do is work on this outer area that's this dark blue with that kind of water colored edge. So I'm going to set him aside and here's our panel. I've base coated it with, um, first sealed it with multi-purpose sealer, sanded it, and then base coated it with a couple coats of white paint and then sanded that again and transferred the design with some gray graphite paper. You just want the outlines right now, so uh, it's going to give us some indication to see where we're going to put our dark background. We want to leave a little bit of light around the edge of the design so that it has a little contrast. So you can see here we've left some light edges around the design and let some of the blue come in and touch here and there, especially here on the bottom where we're using it for our shadows. So to do this, we're going to work with a couple of colors. I use Traditions acrylics, and we're going to use Ultramarine Blue and Black. The Ultramarine Blue by itself is a little bit lighter than what I'd like our background to be, or a little bit brighter. So we're going to mix just a touch of the black in with that to give us this dark navy blue color. So I'm going to sit this palette over to the side a little bit. And we're going to start by using a, a wide brush and I want to dampen this background. And because it's so large, we don't want to do everything all at once. So we'll work on this in sections. So I'm just going to work here at the bottom underneath the bear and basket and just use my brush to apply a light film of water and I just want that to just gloss out a little bit on the surface so you can see a shine. And then we're going to pick up a little bit of the blue on our brush and just tip that with a little bit of the black. You need just very little black to get that darkened down. And then I'm just going to start painting that into this wet background. And this may take a couple coats to build up some darkness, so we're just going to start by applying this first coat and then we'll work around the board and let this dry and come back and apply a second coat. On this bottom edge of the design, because we're going right up to the, the design, you can just paint along the, the graphite lines to fill that in because this is going to be our shadow underneath the the basket and the banner and the teddy bear. On this side over here, I'm just going to let that fade out. So I've got this brush loaded, more almost like a side load. So on the short end of my brush, I don't have much paint. So when I want to soften that into the, the water, I can just by turning my brush. You can also use a large mop brush and soften that layer to blend it out a little bit more. I'm just tapping that into the water. So we're going to... It helps if you have two brushes while you're working. One that you can apply the clean water with and one that you can use for your paint. So here I've got a 
a large three-quarter inch flat that I'll use to apply my water. So I'm going to come over this side and start working kind of clockwise around the design. So again, I'm just brushing on some clean water over this half. And you just want enough so that it gives a nice even shine to that surface. So again, I'm going to pick up some more of my blue and a touch of the black paint to come, if, come up with that nice navy background and then we're going to start working around this edge. And again, here under the bear we're going to go dark because that's going to be a shadow. But as I come up this side, I'm going to put my dark edge to the outer edge and work that in so that this inner section here where the teddy bear design is will have a sort of a halo around that. So I'm just again pick up more paint as you need it. And if you want your background to be a brighter blue, just use a little less black. If you want it darker, add a little more. I'm just going for kind of a navy nautical blue. So we're going to, again, soften that out with a mop brush and let that work into that wet background. And you'll see up here where I haven't put water yet, we want to keep that edge soft so that we don't have a hard ridge where we start and stop on this background. Like I almost got down here. But we'll darken that on our second go round, so we won't worry about that right now. So just going to continue on applying the water first. And then coming back with paint. Again, the dark edge of your paintbrush to the outer edge and let it bleed into the middle so that we have a lighter background around the design. Pick up some more paint. And here where I start and stop, I'm gonna go ahead and dab that fast so that we don't have a dried edge there. And then go back with our mop brush and soften all of this. So you can see that's that's our first coat. We're gonna let Okay, all's dry on our fish first coat, so we're going to go back and add a second coat of color to this. So we're going to just repeat this process. A light coat of water to the area we're going to be brushing color on and extend it just a little beyond where you're going to be working so that you don't have any hard edges. And then pick up some paint. I'm using a three-quarter inch angle and we're using a mix of ultramarine blue with a very small touch of black. You can vary that black depending on how dark you want that blue to be. And then I'm just going right over what we previously put on here. Just building up some density to this color. And you'll find each layer that you put on goes on a little smoother, so. We're reaching the point where we stopped our water, so we need to just take a break for a second and 
soften any areas that you want with your mop brush. And then we'll go on and continue adding water as we move up the side of the panel. And I'm just brush mi mixing this paint. I'm not trying to go for an exact color each time. Just, you know, it's nice to have some variations. So if some's a little bluer and some's got a little more black, that's fine. And you can see on our finish when we've got some white here along and then we're going to come down and touch this hat and leave a little bit of white here on the top so we can work a little more color here around the hat and keep some of this white area here in place and again when you get it to a certain point you can take your mop brush and just tap that a little bit to soften that color. Continue on with your water. And this is just a very sloppy side load where I'm coming down the edge and just walking it back into the center a little bit. And it melds into that water layer so it should start bleeding together. And a little touch of black out here on this edge to, to deepen that a little bit. And again, take the mop brush and just soften that back down into the water. Okay, and you, you can just continue doing this. If you still feel like you need another layer of color, you can add one more in. Um, we'll, we'll later go in and do some floats down here around the bottom to darken these shadows after we get our teddy bear and basket placed in, but your background should be about ready by now. So we'll let this layer dry. I'd like you to base the teddy bear in with a couple shades of gray. We're using Traditions Dark Gray Value 3, Traditions Medium Gray Value 6. You can see here that I've uh, painted the bear's body, um, part of his face on each side and the inside of his ear and leg and foot with the dark gray value. Then the portions that I kind of want to come forward, I have put in the medium gray. His muzzle up to his forehead and right here where you're putting the dark gray on the side of his face and the light at the top. When you get here to the middle where they meet, just while they're wet, pat them together so that they blend. You're going to paint the outside of the ear, the light, or I'm sorry, the medium gray value, his arm, and the outside of his foot. Now, you'll see here right behind the basket, we see his back arm and a little bit of his body. I went in ahead and painted the body, the dark gray value. And the arm, I didn't want to go as light as the light, so I did a mix of the two. I mixed, like just brush mixed a little bit of the light gray and a little bit of the, I'm sorry, the little bit of the medium gray and a little bit of the dark gray and painted his arm in. So you can see it's a little bit darker than the medium, but not, as, not quite as dark as the dark gray. And then I started cleaning up his hat in the flag where we got some of the background colors on it with a coat of white. So I'm going to go over with one more coat of white on these just to tone down that dark blue background that got spattered into the, the areas that are going to be more white. The next thing I want you to base is the basket. I used um, like a half inch angle or flat to do the body of the basket and then switch to a, a smaller uh, quarter inch or maybe like a number four flat quarter inch angle or a number four flat to do the the rim and the handle. The the rim on the front and the basket and the handle I did using yellow oxide and inside the basket I painted with raw sienna. The flag pole I did with the the medium gray value, did the, the little ball on top of the, the flagpole with the yellow oxide and then I used our background mix 
to paint in some stripes on all of the firecrackers and the starfish was based with a mix of titanium white plus a little bit of raw sienna just to make a kind of a light beigey color. The stems were the, the background mix of blue mixed with a little bit of yellow oxide to make this dirty green. So go ahead and get that, that part base done in and then we'll start working on some details on the teddy bear. The teddy bear, to start adding a little more dimension to him, we're going to do some side loaded shading on him with black. So I'm using a quarter inch angle. You can also use a small flat that's about a quarter inch. Whatever you're most comfortable with doing side loading. I tend to like the angle brush for that. So I'm going to use black and just, I'm tipping the brush in the black and I'm going to use a wax palette to to work that that paint into the brush. So I'm just brushing in one little track on the, the palette. And this is a wax palette. And if your water and paint carry too far to the other, the short end of the brush, just pinch it out with your finger a little bit. It's not going to matter too much on this bear because he's all grays anyway. So if we have a little bit of a water edge, that's okay. So we're going to float here inside the ear just to add a little shading there. I want to float under his neck up against his muzzle. Add a little bit more shading in there. Any place that we want to recede. I'm going to work back in that track to add a little more paint to the brush and we can come down here and while that's drying we'll, we'll float here along his leg to separate it more from his arm. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side against his foot. We want to darken here in his eye sockets. down along his muzzle. I'm going to pick up a little more paint on my brush. I'm starting to run low and work on the other side of his face. And we're going to have to redo reinforce some of these. Sometimes just one float isn't enough. So I'm going to go back again here over his upper chest. He really doesn't have a neck. But just here where his muzzle comes down on his chest, I want to darken that a little more. And then I'm going to also do this back arm. I'm going to go with the, the floating is on the arm but against his body. all the way up here along the edge of the, the handle just to darken his arm overall so it, it goes into the background a little bit more. The Traditions Black is very opaque so I find I have to add a little more water to it than say if I was using an Americana paint because there's so much pigment in it. I'm going to come here and float along the bottom edge of his leg I'm walking that in a little bit on each end uh, to give a little bit softer curve to that so we don't have just a, a jagged 
squared off float. You can come up here and float under the hat a little bit too. Add just a little touch more water to that. I don't want it too dark. But we want a little shadow under where the hat's sitting on his head. Oh, one other place I wanted, before we get started on that, I wanted to shade this little area under his muzzle where his mouth is so we can see where we're working as we're shading that when we're stippling. And it's just a little V shape here. Get a little too much paint. You're just gonna come there under So it meets up with um, the shading under his chin. I like my teddy bears to be fuzzy, so I'm going to stipple him. And to do that, I'm using uh, Royal Langneckle Sable Tech Round. This is a number eight uh, short round. It's a series 95005. And these are um, nice little bullet tip brushes. You can use any type of dry brush that you have that's your favorite. I also like the, the Royal Sables, which are a 5005 series. And I tend to use the short rounds on both series just because they're a little easier to control. Now we're going to continue doing the stippling, but we're going to and we're going to use the grays that we've been using to base him. Now, when we do the face here, because this is a a lighter gray, we want to go to a lighter value than this for our stippling, so it shows up. So I'm going to use that medium gray value that we had started with basing, and we're going to add a little bit of white to it to make it a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to put some here on the palette. That's the, the medium gray. I'm gonna pick up a little white on my brush and pat that in. And you can have some variations. It doesn't have to be an even mix. And we're going to start here down on the front of his face. And I'm just tapping real lightly. And as you come out to this edge, just overlap it a little bit so you're covering that sharp edge. We want it to be like a soft, fuzzy edge to his muzzle. Teddy bears are made out of mohair and they'll have a fuzzy, not fuzzy edge, not a, a sharp, even edge. I'm just going to go around where his nose will fit in here. So you can see the little indication of where we'll paint his nose in in a little while. And you can see as I'm doing the edge, I'm working with the brush pointed towards the edge. I can see where I'm working that way. I'm not um, covering up my line of vision. Again, as I work to this side, I'm turning the brush so the brush is facing that edge. And I'm just pushing out over top of that. Where I'm putting down paint right now, it looks lighter, but it's because the paint, this side's drying and this side is wet, and the wet paint looks a little bit lighter than the dry paint does. But we're going to come up the middle of his nose, between his eyes. And I don't want to cover all the shading up here, so I'm adjusting my pressure, and I'm just barely tapping that surface so I'm blending that stippling into that shadow, but not covering it. 
Now as we come down the side of his face that's darker, I want to darken the stippling just a little bit. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the dark gray and mix that into it. So we have a little darker value. We want it to show up against the dark gray, but we don't want it as light as what his muzzle is. And again, as I'm starting to work back over towards the eye socket, I'm lightening up my pressure so I'm not putting down so much paint into that background. We want to leave that eye socket mostly, just the, the dark gray background, and then we'll paint his eye in there in a little while. Let's switch over to this side, and again, because this is a little more in shadow, we want to add some stippling, but we don't want it to be too bright because that side of his face is mostly under his hat, so I'm just putting down a little bit of lighter value than what that base coat is. Now his ear, since that's the medium gray, again, and it's lighter, we want a value that's lighter over top of that that's going to show up. So I'm going to use again the, the medium gray value and mix a little bit of white into that. I'm coming out over that edge to make a soft fuzzy edge. You can make a little soft edge, fuzzy edge on the inside too where it's going into the shadow of the ear. I'm going to pick up more white and just add a little stronger highlight on that ear. Now I just want to kind of get his overall fuzziness in and then we can go back and adjust the values a little bit. We'll probably lighten his face a little bit more after this but let's just get one overall pass over the whole bear. So again, his arm here is lighter, so we want to go with the, a lighter mix, which is the medium gray plus a little white. And you can vary that mix. I, you know, I would like to see him lighter here at the top in front of his arm, and you can go a little darker on this back edge so it recedes. So let's start with a, a lighter value up here. And we can come back later and refine that with a little more white. And as you're stippling, you want that background, that base coat, to show through. And that's going to add your texture and shading. And as I come around this back edge, I would like to go a little darker on that. So. I'm going to, instead of mixing the medium gray with white to lighten it, I'm going to mix a little bit of the, the dark gray value with it to darken it. It's still going to be a different color than the base coat to give us some texture, but we're going to, it's adding shading going to the back of the arm. Again, pointing the brush to the edge to give that fuzzy texture. And we'll soften this line here where they're meeting in just a second. Going back to a lighter value. Not quite light enough. Need some more white. I work back over the into the shadow to soften. I'm just really lightening up my pressure so that I'm just barely touching the surface and putting just a minimum of paint down to soften that where those two values meet. 
if you can see how we're softening where those two values are coming together. Just barely touching down to add a little bit of light over top of that. I'm going to pick up some more white and lighten the front of his hand here. More, more paint down at the edge where I want the strongest highlight. And as I move back into the other colors or values, I'm lightening up my pressure to blend that in so it trails out to nothing. We're going to do the same thing on Teddy's leg. Start with a, a lighter value on this side where we're going to highlight it a little bit. And I'm not going much, too much into that shadow where we floated that shade. I'm just light, just barely touching it. The same way on this side. And if you find your brush has too much of a pattern, like a regular pattern, be sure to twist and turn the brush and move it in different directions so that you don't get a, a real even say like a circle pattern or you know whatever sometimes brushes get their bristles get pushed in a certain way they're they they do not want to move so much and you might get a little line or a, a circle or something and you don't want to keep adding that same pattern in the same position through the whole design it can be kind of distracting so be sure you twist and turn the brush so that you get some variation. Okay, as we're coming into this dark shadow, I'm going to, to darken what I'm stippling. I'm going to the, the dark gray value. And I still want that black that we put down to show through, so I'm just barely touching. If you lose too much of it, just pick up a little bit of black on your brush and just put a darker stipple down. But be sure to soften it as you come back into your the middle of the leg. We're going to use this darker color with the um, black in it to start working on his body because because he's behind the basket and we've got all the shading around the arm and under the chin, we want the edges of his body to be a lot darker. We'll put a little bit of highlight here in the middle. see how we're darkening right there so that mix is adding texture but it's a little darker and as we come in here I'm gonna go a little bit lighter and soften those two together so we get a little bit of a highlight on his belly Again, as I'm working back into the dark, I'm just lightening up on my pressure, so they sort of blend together. Put a little bit of that light on this side of his body. So he's starting to look fuzzy. Um, need to do his arm back here and we're going to do go dark on it because it's back in the shadows so I'm using a lot of black a lot of black in that especially close to the body and just soften that edge out here a little I'm going to work on his foot and because his foot's here more in the foreground we're going to go again lighter on that
I'm going to keep the lightest to the top of his foot. As we come down on this side, I'm going to go a little darker. So we'll go back the other direction. Instead of lighter than, we'll go darker than. Okay, so the top of his foot is light and we're shading with a darker value, the stippling down below. We need to add a little stipple on his chin. And that is going to be a lighter one. I'm going to lighten his hand up again. Again, softening that back down into the the value so you don't have a sharp line. We just want a little highlight there on the top of his hand. Do a little bit more of one here on his shoulder. A little more here on his belly. But let's go ahead and get his nose based in so we can get a little more features on him and we'll paint in his eyes. And I'm just going to do that with black. I'm using a, a little number two flat. And I'm putting his eyes right up here against the inside of his muzzle. So they just barely touch it. And they're just round button eyes. And his nose is going to be right down here. Just kind of a an oval shape. And then you can bring it down just to a little dip in the front middle. Let's go ahead and float shade the his foot, the pad on the bottom of his feet. And that's the dark gray, so we're gonna float shade it with black just around the outer edge to give it a little more dimension. And then we'll dry brush a little bit of highlight on that and we're going to use the same brush we've been stippling with. Just pick up a little bit of your medium gray value, it's the lighter one, and work that into the brush. Um, you can brush a little bit off on a paper towel so you don't have too much excess. And then I'm just going to scrub in a little bit here in the center of his foot. And I just sort of work in a circular motion, just twirling the end of that brush around. And you're just depositing just a little bit of paint. You're better off adding a little at a time than getting too much at once. You can always add more, but it's hard to take it off. So that gives a real pretty soft look to his foot. Now these stipple and dry brushes, I don't like to put them in water. I, as I'm working, I always keep them dry. You know, if you need to clean them out, um, I would use some like hand sanitizer gel because the alcohol in that will evaporate and leave the brush dry. But if you get these brushes wet, it's really hard to do your stippling and dry brushing because the water gets up in the ferrule and wants to wick out when you when you go to put the brush down and you'll get a blob of paint that just smears. Let's do some shading on his hat. And I think we will use the... We'll start with the medium gray. Don't We'll just build that up slowly, see how it looks. So again, I'm, because this is a fairly small painting, I'm just using a, a quarter inch flat or angle. And I'm going to float shade here above the, the brim of the sailor hat. It's a little dry. I like my floats pretty wet. And then we're going to come out here on this outer edge on each side. So that'll be the start of the shading on his hat. And we can also do some of that on the, the firecrackers. I don't want to do it on the dark blue stripes, but on the white, we'll just come down and 
float some of that gray along the outer edge. We've got this little firecracker here in the middle. We'll go get one side of it done. And when those are dry, we can come back on this big one here and flip down the other, the back edge of that. We're going to reinforce this later. It's just to kind of start giving some dimension. And we'll do some on this little one in the basket. We're going to do a, start doing a little bit of detail on the basket. And the first thing I want to do is do some dividing lines on it. And we're going to use Burnt Umber, which is a dark brown. And I'm using just a, again, the small little two, number two flat brush. And I'm just going to paint some little narrow stripes down the, the length of the basket. I'm gonna turn this sideways so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start at the, right in the middle at the brim. And just drag that down to the bottom. And I'm gonna space those maybe about a half inch apart. You can draw some guidelines if you'd like to keep your lines straight. But baskets aren't, are kind of organic, so if they're not perfectly straight, it probably adds a little to the charm. That one got a little dry, so it helps to have a little bit of water in your brush to, to make that paint just come off your brush really easily. Our basket is made of these little slats, and we're going to run a few across too. Now the ones that run across, you, we want to kind of curve them a little so they follow the bottom edge of this basket. So again, I'm going to do, I find it easiest to do my first one in the middle. So I'm going to start one here across the middle and then curve it up just a little bit as I go to the sides. We'll drop down about halfway in between the, that line and the bottom and do another one. And again, I'm trying to find follow the contour of the bottom of that basket. Get a little light, pick up some more paint. We can start doing a little shading in the basket. So I'm going to side load my quarter inch angle with some burnt umber. And I want to shade this inside of the basket. Let's see, we're going to work against the rim. That's starting to make the, the inside of the basket seem a little, to have a little dimension, so it's, it's tucking down in there. I'm just sort of filling in these little negative space areas with a wash of this burnt umber. Made the bottom of the handle. Fuck that up so far, then I'm going to turn the brush and float up the inside edge of that handle to make it recede a little. And we can do the same thing on this side. Darken that outer edge. Float here under the rim. I 
And again, I'm using quite a bit of water in this paint to keep it transparent. So I just want a wash of this color. Shade this outside edge of the rim. And I'm going to shade here behind where this little tab of the, the rim laps over. I'm going to switch to a half inch brush and I want to shade down these outer sides of the basket. I want that float to be a little bit wider so that's why I'm switching to a, a larger brush. Again, we're still sh shading with the burnt umber. Be sure that your float here under the, the rim is dry before you go down the side because you don't want to pick that's shading up. If it's slightly damp, it'll it could pick up and leave a hole in your float. I'm just walking that out just a, a little bit. I'm gonna go back on these this checkerboard thing that we've done and I'm gonna darken where these cross on some of them. So we'll make this one go over. So every other one I'm I'm gonna cross it over top of the one below it. And then the next line will reverse it. So this one will go under, this will go over. You need some kind of basket weave. effect here. I'll highlight this little tab here with some white Kind of a irregular float. I'm just washing some white in on the tip of that. If any of your little stripes look too variegated in color, you can go back and go over some. I noticed some after mine dried, they they got really light. highlight the at teddy bear's eyes and I'm using just a script liner and some white paint. I'm going to add two little dots on the upper right of each side. So one and then a little smaller. And then in the lower left I'm just going to add a just a real fine crescent line. And on his nose to give the effect, a lot of teddy bears will have thread noses. I'm just going to drag like horizontal, just sketchy horizontal white lines. So it'll look like the highlights on the threads. And I'll make it a little bit brighter on the, the right side. To match up to the highlights in his eyes. And then to give a little more dimension and soften those lines down, I'm going to float some black here on the left side. And I'll float just a little teeny bit of white on the right. Just do a little, actually to the top right.
Now that we've got the rest of his body in, I, his face needs to be brighter, so I'm going to add some more white to that, to his muzzle. I'm really working that paint down into the brush because I want this to be real soft. And I don't like the way his the side of his muzzle doesn't quite match the side, so I'm going to bring this side out just a little bit more. Just tap that out. This brush still has some of the gray in it from when I was working before, so it's it's toning that white down a little. 